forward as well. Okay, so I'm going to actually just log in here or just show you at the start, I suppose, the, the login link that you're going to have or something similar to it. Um, so you'll have something like this, volleyball.canada.sportsmanager.ie forward slash main. Um, so this will be your club portal login. Um, your username is always going to be your club name uh, pre preceded by the uh, provincial union. So in this case, it will be something like Volleyball Manitoba, uh, 204 Volleyball Club, and then your password. So username is always going to be your, your, your club name. Password, we have all of the um, users created here in the system. We have all of your, your passwords that we can distribute to you as you need. I'm just going to log in here as my admin user. So I have the ability to log in as any of the clubs here on the system. So I will just log in as 204. Um, so when you log into your club portal, you're going to see something pretty similar to this. Um, so up the top, it's always going to display your club name, uh, just so that you know who you're logged in as. You can, if you want, we'll obviously, as I said, we'll issue you with a password. If you'd ever need to change that password, you just prefer to have, it, have a different one than what's there, you can click this My Account button. This will bring you in the first bit, will allow you to update the email and mobile number that are associated with the account. But if you change the, or click the Change Password button there, that'll allow you to enter in the current passwords, which is the one that we've distributed to you, and then enter in your own password as well, just if you want a little bit more security on, on the site. Um, on your member portal here, so there's a few kind of key um, links and we'll go through them and then we'll actually go through some, um, some data on our testing site as well. So we won't actually do anything on the live environment here, um, but we'll, we'll go through some examples on the test environment just so you can see the functionality of the system. Um, but we'll just go through the links here that you will have turned on for you, uh, not necessarily in order as they're displayed, but more so in order um, as you will use them, I suppose. So over here uh, on your membership is where we'll start. So you will always have the ability to view your members in the system by clicking the view members button. Now, obviously, by default, when you go into that first, you're not going to see any members. Um, but you do have options when you do have some members in there. You can search through them. You can open up your search and filter options there. You can filter by season. Uh, you can filter by membership status. You can filter by um, membership category. Filter by search by name, first name, last name, gender, email address, and so on. You will also have your sorry in your membership setup if i come down here as well a lot of these links you don't need to worry about the functionality of them we'll just have them published or copied down and turned on for you just so more so for a troubleshooting um aspect for, for ourselves here if we're trying to figure out what issues you might be having we'll be able to come in here to your begin selling and your membership types and payment methods and just make sure that everything is set up okay but all of this information here in your membership setup is going to be published down to you. You don't need to worry about setting any of it up. Um, your payment methods here, we will have a Stripe account set up. So Stripe is the payment provider that we're, um, that we're integrated with. Um, our system uses a split pay model, which means that when you register onto the system, your payment gets split between the governing body level, which in this case is Volleyball Canada, then your provincial level, which is Volleyball Manitoba, and then your club level, um, which is the own, your own club that you're logged in at. So when a member comes on to register or when you register a member on their behalf and you make a payment, at the point of payment, that payment gets split between all of the different associations and they get their own level of fee. So in your payment methods, you'll always see um, a stripe uh, split pay CAD membership or payment method and the status of it should be active. So again, there's nothing that you need to worry about there as long as that's there and um, that's all that's all you need to concern yourself with. 
if you go into edit it there with the little pencil icon, there's not actually anything that you can do here, bar change the name of it, but um, you know, you don't really need to do that. Um, the other things that are going to be published down to you as well will be your membership types. So the membership types and membership categories, um, again, they're created at the governing body level. So your membership categories will be created in Volleyball Canada. So you would have the likes of your recreational player, your competitive player, coach, club president, and so on. Categories for those are all created at the top level. Again, they're published down into the province and then published down at provincial level into the club. So the information that's been captured by you registering into a club is also being captured by your province and by the governing body. Um, again, as I said, you don't need to worry about creating anything there or, or, or doing anything, taking any action on that. These will be published down to you, but you just need to have them in order to start registering your, your uh, members in. So the membership types in our system, membership types effectively are registration forms. So all of the data that um, needs to be captured, so your first name, last name, uh, date of birth, email address, phone number, so on, and your waivers, uh, most importantly, they'll all be shared down, uh, down with you, down to the club. And finally, so too will your begin selling. So begin selling is effectively the packages that you make available for your members to register into. So your membership types or membership categories, you might have your uh, recreational player or your competitive player uh, or your coach published down to you. But you'll also need to have a package available for the person to register into that particular category set up. Um, but again, as I said, you don't need to worry about um, creating any of that. It'll all be there for you. We're just keeping these links active in case you run into any issues. We'll be able to log into your account to just make sure that all of that is set up correctly for you. Um, probably the most important one that we'll touch on now shortly is the, is the group registration. And that's what effectively allows you to register all of your members. Um, so you'll be able to go in, you'll be able to uh, input some basic details for those members. Um, and then after that, what the system does is it triggers an email to the member that you register. And then the member logs into their account, updates their information, fills out the full membership form, signs their waivers, and then they become active in the system. When that is done, we would move over to the team sheet panel section over here. So our team sheet panels is our rosters um, and we can create rosters for any of the age grades that have been set up at your provincial level again. So again, if you have uh, teams in your club for 14U, 16U, 18U, male or female, whichever it is, you can set up individual rosters for all of those. You can add the players that you've registered. You can add the coaches that you've registered onto each of those. You can enter them into events and so on. And then lastly, just on the other links that we have turned on here, uh, our accreditation section and our member credentials. So member credentials will effectively allow you to view the credentials that your members hold in your club. So again, in our system, what a credential is, it's a, it's a certificate or it's a qualification or something like that. So um, things that would be recognized as credentials in our system would be your respect in sport, safe sport, um, your, your sterling background check, things like that. So you're, you'd be able to log in or click into that link, check the status of the members. You won't actually have any act, um, ability to edit any of the information that they submit, or you won't have any ability to approve any of the information that they submit, but you'll be able to view it and you'll be able to see and search by uh, different coaches' names just to make sure that they have um, the correct credentials that they should have in order to be assigned to teams and so on. Um, so that's what your login is going to look like on the live environment. I'm just going to switch over to our test environment um, and I'll just go through some, some examples um, on this as well. So again, you'll always see if we're on the test environment, we'll have this staging um, 
sign up here on the on the top left. So you'll know that anything that we do in the system here isn't going to actually have any impact on what we're doing in the live environment. So nothing that I do here in this 204 volleyball club is going to have any impact on the actual live club there in the system. So um, first thing I'll come into is I'll come into the begin selling or sorry, the, the membership types first. And I'll just show you that, like I said previously, membership types will be published down to you. So these few here that I've just set up as tests for competitive player, indoor coach, recreational coach, that's the kind of information that you will see in your um, in your club portal when it's published down. You can come in by clicking the edit button to view the fields that are required here. And you can see they're all grayed out, so you don't, don't actually have the ability to edit any of those fields. But that's just an example of the information that's been captured um, for each member. So first name, last name, date of birth, gender, address, and so on, all the way down to the emergency contact details and the different waivers that need to be signed um, for to, to, to be uh, a member in Volleyball Canada. The other thing that I said that we would have published down to you is your begin selling. So again, you can see just here, we just have competitive player and coach at the moment. Again, if I come in to edit the coach one here, again, you can see our union price. So it's $32 up the chain. Um, so the $32 is the Volleyball Canada level price. Again, there might be a, a Manitoba level uh, price added onto that as well. Um, I haven't added it in on the staging branch, but it could potentially be in there as well. Your club price, always leave this at zero. Um, even if you have a club that is charging um, members a fee, because your club isn't actually capturing that payment through our system this season, always leave that club price at zero or else the system will try to charge the member. Um, but again, you don't need to worry about changing anything here or editing anything here. We're really just leaving these links on just to make sure that everything is set up correctly for you in case we need to troubleshoot anything for you. Um, so as long as your begin selling um, has been set up, as long as your membership types are there, and as long as you have an active payment method, you're ready to start registering players. And to do that, you can come into the group registration. So group registration effectively allows you to register um, your players, your coaches, and so on. We would generally advise that you would do this maybe one team at a time. So don't come in and try and register a hundred different members into your club at the one time, just because of the, the weight or the load that it puts on the system, you can have a tendency to maybe time out. So we would advise that you do it maybe a team at a time. So about 10 or 12 players, three or four coaches or so on, whatever it might be per team and um, first thing that you need to do is enter in a registration email so this is the confirmation email uh, that's going to be sent out to the person who is registering the team so if, if you're doing this as um as an official or as a club admin or um, as a coach or whatever you put the email address of the person who you want to receive the confirmation um email so I'm just going to put in my own personal email here. The payment method you'll see there is our active payment method, it is our strike payment method. You won't have any option to change that. That's the only one that you're going to have active in the system. And the membership status there you'll see is needs more info. So what that effectively means is that any person or any, any player or any coach that you register into this system they're going to come in, come in with a status of need more info. And what that means is that they then need to log into their account. They need to update their information. So they won't immediately become active in the system. They need to have their waivers signed before they're allowed to be added to rosters and everything like that. So uh, having them or registering them in this status um, means that when they do log into their account, they'll see a button there that allows them to update their information, allows them to complete the waivers and um, fill out the rest of the, the form and eventually become active in the system. So um, that's all that you need to do on this initial setup. 
you will have an email template here. The first time you click into this, this email template is going to be open like so, and it's also going to be blank. Um, what happens is after the first time you put through a registration, whatever you've put in here as your email template will save um, for any future registrations that you do. So I'm just going to leave it blank <clears throat> just for now. And we'll start again as I, for uh, right, typing out a new email. So obviously put in um, hi. And what you have over here on the right hand side is this little toggle called user variable. So if I click that, you'll see the different options that I'm able to use here. So I can put in member first name. And what that does is whatever first name I put in for the member, it's just going to personalize the email for them. Um, so it, it just allows you that instead of writing high member or you know putting in some just generic text, it's at least personalizing the, the email a little bit for them. So again, we'd recommend that you type out something like this on the email. So you have been registered uh, to the, and again, you have a user variable for club name. And then something like, please, Log into your account to complete your registration. And again, we have a login URL there that we can use. And then just find regards from whoever it is. Now, we do also, if you like, we do have support videos done up for this um, and for, for the the process and the steps that the member needs to take. So we have had a few clubs in other provinces have just included the link for the videos here as well, just as a little, little bit more help for any users that, um, that might need it. But once you have your email written out and dictated and you're happy with, with what it says, you can now start to add your members. So you can see here on the search member, you can type in a name here. What this is doing here when you type this though, this is just looking up within your club for any existing members. So when you start this off, the likelihood is that you're not going to actually have any members registered into your club yet. So what you can do is you can click this little plus icon beside it and you can start entering in members um, with this basic information first. So just first name, last name, date of birth and email address. So I'm just going to in something simple like this just put them in as player one random date of birth there i'm just going to make sure that this is a new email address that i haven't used before so when i tab off this now you'll just see for a split second something popped up there so what that was trying to do is that's trying to find this member existing in the system um, somewhere else. So whether that's in another club, whether it's in another province, it's looking up the whole system to find that person already existing, just so you're not creating a duplicate of the member. Because it only flashed up there for a split second, it means that it didn't find any version of that member. So we're good to go and we're able to select the membership type that that member is registering into. It will show us the price that we need to pay. No upgrade discount on this person because it hasn't found them in the system already. And then it tells us that we're due to pay the same amount obviously as the price. If you've made a mistake there or anything like that, you can click the little X um, and you can remove that and you can start again. To add a member then, again, like I said, we can do multiples in here. So add a new member and I'm just gonna look for somebody else. So. I'm going to put a member in here that um, I've already registered in the Volleyball Manitoba Membership Club. And this might be a person, they're not necessarily registered as a coach, but they could be registered as a club president um, and they are, are also a coach. And what it does is there you can see that it's looked up and it's found these other versions of this member. Now you can see this bottom guy here, it's a different name that's on it. And that's because what the search is doing is 
even though you've put in four fields there, first name, last name, date of birth, and email address, the lookup tries to match on three out of those four criteria. So as long as second name, date of birth, and email address match, it'll find me a match. And that just allows you to still find a match just in case you spelled the first name differently or something like that. Also, another scenario would be if you have first name, surname, date of birth all correct, but you've used a different email address, it'll still try and find the member for you anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna take this middle guy. Now you will notice that if you do have any existing members, they will have member IDs, generally starting with, with 210, just this test member that I put in, I didn't um, generate an ID for him. But generally they will have an ID and generally they will begin with the 210 number. This time, if I choose um, my coach membership type here, um, again, it's giving me a price. This time, because I've already paid this price, I, the system again works on a pay highest model. So it doesn't matter really how many different memberships um, or membership categories you have associated with one single member within the system. It's only ever going to charge them to pay the highest fee. So if you have the player costs $20, coach costs $30, uh, club president costs $40. Even if that same member has the combination of all three of those memberships on their account, they're only, only ever going to pay a maximum of $40. So that's why even though this person is registered in a different uh, membership category, it's still discounting um, this $6 from, from their um, overall fee that's due. Now, you can obviously you can continue to add in your players as you see fit. Again, I'll just put in a random date of birth for that guy and again, random email. And again, it just flashed up to try and find a player. Nothing was found. And again, once I choose my membership type, it's the full price that I have to pay. So you can obviously continue on and add like I said, if you can limit it to try and adding just a full team at a time. And um, once you've done that, click next. And sorry, now every time, or sometimes on the staging system, things can work a little bit uh, differently, but so you can see here, it will give you a summary of how many competitive players you've registered, how many coaches you've registered, and obviously the discount amount is included there as well. And then the breakdown of each will be included down below too. So um, I'm gonna take my, just a, a test uh, card here as well. Um, take the Canadian number, um, put in your card number, expiry date, security code and postcode, click continue. Now, there are fees that apply here. So the fees will be added onto this fees are 3.1% uh, plus 50 cent per transaction. So that is added on um, once you click to make payments, so just make sure that everything is okay there. Once it is, click the make payment button. Now, again, because we're on staging, I'm expecting this to um, give me an error message, but the um, should go through anyway. Yeah. Uh, so that has given me the error, but my emails should be coming through here. In any case, just going to refresh that. So you can see there, there's a few that have come through. So the first one that comes through to a new member um, is an email to activate their account. So this person, it's a new, it's a new account, hasn't been set up on the system before. This is first of all asking me to activate the account. So this is a very important um, step to do. I'm just going to come back into the the um, club login just for one second, just to show you this. Now, I have already imported a few test members just for something else that I want to show you here in one second. So I need to log out there first, just so that this will show. And log back in. So. When I click view members here, okay, so there is a list of test members that I've imported just so that I have members to add to a panel uh, or a roster later on. So they're all fake members. So 
we did register new members there. So when you've registered your first new members, you'll probably come in here and you'll actually see a blank list of members and you might be wondering where your members have actually gone. There's nothing to worry about there. The thing is that you can see here when we open up our search and filter options, by default, our membership status is active. And as we said earlier, when we registered these members originally, um, we don't register them in an active status, we register them in a needs more info status. So what we can do is we can toggle that membership status, scroll down and click need more info. And you can see there, there are the players that we've registered. So none of them are active, none of them have the, the active tick on them. If I click into any one of them here, You can see the status on that member will be at need more info. So that's just an important step to be aware of. Um, and it's an important step to make your players and your coaches aware of as well, that they won't be active, they won't be able to be added um, onto your rosters until they've actually come in and updated this information. Um, so the first email, like I said, that they'll get is the activate account email. Again, if they click that, what I'll do is I'll just I'll just log in instead. Um, because again on the test site, sometimes this um doesn't work. But um you can see here this is the email that was sent out to the person who is registering players. So you can see there again, breakdown of the payment is included. And then the last email is the one that we sent out um and the one that we typed out in our um in our in our email form on the group registration page so again if i click that i'm just going to go incognito here um again i probably just had too many tabs open on the um on my uh, test environment now you can see here again that even if the person doesn't get the activation email or sometimes they might go into their uh, their spam and they don't see it or something like that, if they do follow the login link on the email that you send out to them and they put in their email address, if that account hasn't been activated, uh, there will be a notification there and they'll be able to resend that activation email and they'll be able to, to activate their account that way. So they don't need to panic over not getting the activation email. If they follow the login link that you put on the email that you send out to them, the system will recognize that the email address hasn't been activated yet, and they'll have the option to resend the activation link again. So again, that'll tell me that a new link has been sent. And there again, we see a new link that has been sent out. I'll just try this again from here. Uh, I'm just going to try that one in incognito and see will it let me in this time. Yeah, so again, I just need to create a password. Uh, put in my first name, last name, choose my language, accept the terms and conditions and click activate. And then this will ask me to log in again. So. Okay, so when I am logged in, this is what the member will see. So you can see here the status is in need more info. Their member ID is obviously there. The important thing that they need to do now is click this update information button. And once they do that, they'll see the full registration form that, that needs to be signed. So you can see here the information that's included is the information that we submitted when we were registering the player which is first name, last name, date of birth, and email address. None of, the other, none of the other information is included. So what the member needs to do is come in and fill this information out. And again, they can change the information that you've submitted for them as well. So if you've actually accidentally put in their date of birth wrong, they'll still be able to update it there.
And again, I'll just fill this out as quick as I can. And you'll see any of the fields that are in bold text there, they're required fields, anything that's in um, a regular font will be non-required. And then last thing they need to do is just come down, sign all of their waivers, just make sure they accept all of these. And the last one that's on the form is a little bit different. They need to scroll down and instead of ticking the box, they actually sign their name on that one. Okay, so click update information, nothing's happening there. So I'm just going to scroll back up. I have an error in that field. Click update information again. And you can see now that member has become active. And um, they can uh, again come into their profile here at any time. They can view the information that they've submitted. You can see that they've been registered as part of the group registration. But that's the key bit is that that member status is now active. And they're now, if we log back in here into the club portal, back in as 204, and click view members. So you can see now I've gone up to 51 as opposed to the 50 test members that I'd imported. And there is player one down below, active, available for team sheets, registration date, all the information is there. And again, you can come in, you can view them, and you can see again the additional information that they have submitted. So getting your getting your players active does put a little bit of onus back on them, but they do get the emails triggered out to them. Um, one key bit, I suppose, um, again, I'll just come in here and, and log in as the member. One key bit just to note for them is that uh, when they log in, is that we've we found a few people will come in, they'll see their member there, and then they'll come down and click the register renew button. Now, what the register renew button does is actually makes them register a new member <clears throat> and it will ask them to pay for their registration as well so <clears throat> it's just something to be aware of with any members that um might be having any issues or anything like that and it is kind of why we'd recommend that maybe you include the video link in the email that goes out just to make them aware that it is that update information button that they should click here as opposed to register a new because if they go the register a new route, they do risk potentially registering a duplicate of themselves, but more importantly, also having to pay for that membership, even though you've already paid for them. Um, uh, yes, uh, just a question that came in for those who identify as non-binary, is there an option other than male or female? There are, yes, there are other options on the live environment. And um, again, we just didn't, or we don't have them copied over onto the test environment but they can also choose, I think it's non-binary or prefer not to say as, uh, um, as well as male or female. So there's, there's four options there on the form. Um, <clears throat> so again, I'm just gonna come back in to the club here now on the, on the live environment, or sorry, on the staging environment. So um, <clears throat> key steps are you register the members, they, log in, they accept their waivers, they become fully active in the system. Over here on your team sheet panels, this is where you can now start creating your rosters. So if I click the team sheet panels, you'll see again, as default, when you, when you come in, uh, it'll be blank, there'll be nothing there. To create a new one, just click the add button and this will allow you to add a new one. So sorry, now I'm just gonna have to do something very quickly here back at the uh, provincial level. So we just need to have an active season there for um, for our panels. So you see at the provincial level, we'll have a lot more um, links turned on. Just create that 
make that active and it should now when I log back in. Actually, one more thing that I should check here before I do, um, just on our panels. So again, just to show you this from the provincial level, there is some controls that we can put in here um, around the creation of panels. So you can limit the number of players, limit the number of officials. I'm going to say here that I'm going to allow panels to be created for teams and I'm going to allow users to create their own teams. So again, if I come back in now at the club level, you'll see what I mean by that. So if I click add again to add our new panel, so you can see now there is a season in there. So I'm able to start creating this. Create a panel for a standalone panel option will always be there. Now your standalone panel is just a list of players. There's no real, there's no real functionality around it. So the option that you should be choosing here is team. And that'll allow you to create a panel or a roster for a specific team within a specific age grade. So you see here, you'll probably have a, a much uh, longer collection of age grades here available to you, but I've just set up two for, um, just for demo sake, I'm just gonna choose the 14 new boys. If I click the select a team button, second option there is to create a new team. And then I can call this team whatever I like. So it defaults that the team name will be club name first, and then my team name will be whatever I call it. So it might be U14 white or something like that. My roster name then will be something similar, but it could be U14 boys white Owens roster. Again, just to put a little bit more of an identifier on it. Um, and then the, so, once you have that done, your save button will become active and you can click save. Now I'm just gonna pause for a sec. So, uh, sorry, yeah, just Anthony there answering the question. Um, so, sorry, I'll skip back onto our panel. So, you'll see here it, when you come in first, it's basically just a, a, a roster summary. Uh, the name that we just entered in for it there, the age grade, gender, season, um, so all of, the, all of the information that we saw on the previous page. You can then add players and officials to this. So when we say officials, we mean team manager, coach, and so on. I'm going to click into that first. And what this will allow you to do is this will give you a list of all of the members in your membership database. So you're not constrained by any age grade restrictions or anything like that. So you will see quite a long list um, of different members in there once you've everybody registered in. If you want to filter that down a little bit, you can open up your search and filter options there and you can filter by coach or recreation player or competitive player, whatever different categories you have there, you can filter them down and it just makes searching for whoever you want to add that little bit easier. You can also obviously search by member name uh, gender, so on. Um, but once you add somebody as an official to this roster, so if I just add this uh, test member, Adam Bailey, what he can do now is he can log in on his own account and he can manage this roster the same way as you're doing it here. So if as a club admin, you're just doing kind of one initial setup step here for all of your rosters, as long as you add an official here or multiple officials, anybody that you add in here will be able to manage this panel from their own user account. And they'll have the exact same functionality that you see here. So that's the adding of the officials. Next on to adding the players, the functionality of it is very same. We click add. This time you see a much shorter list of players. And this is because the adding of these players is constrained by the age grade limits. So if I open up my search and filter options, you can see there now that my restrictions, I'm only allowed to add males and I'm only allowed to add those born between the first, first 07, 07 and the 31st of the 12th 07, which is the age grade that I put in for the 14 news. So um, yours, will, yours will probably be again, a little bit wider than that, but again, just for demo purposes, just put in that, that restriction. So you can start to add 
any of those players as long as they fall within the, the age grade limit. And again, when you go back to your panel summary, you'll see there your players is eight, your officials is one. You don't need to click save or anything on that. Once you click back, slow sorry now just go around this way so again you'll see there you've eight players on it you've one official on it you've got a couple of different uh links here as well available to you so you'll see there if any of your players have uploaded uh, profile photos it'll just give you the profile photo and um, their id date of birth age uh their status and again the little pdf icon will do the exact same thing but in a more printable or printer friendly version you do also have the option to come in here and edit this panel and um, then at any time so a couple of questions in there um, sorry yes uh, it's okay um, i'm just going to again just turn on a couple more additional links here for you just to show you uh, something else on this so this is just another option um, and it'll be related to your ability to enter in to um, events for this particular ros uh, roster. So just come down to our events here. So again, these are just all the available member links that we have in the back end. So I'm just going to turn them all on for now, just to make sure that I have this turned on. I probably should just need purchase events, but just instead of coming in and out again, I'm just going to turn them all on for now, turn them back off as I see fit and just click save on that. And when I click to refresh, so you can see there, I now have this other little uh, shopping cart icon on this as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that. And this is showing me, what this will show me is just available events for my age grade. So there's actually more events than this created in the system but it is just showing the ones or showing me the ones that are available to me. So if I want to purchase an event, I just click buy on it. And it's this particular team that I'm entering into this particular event. So click continue. Uh, first thing that you'll need to put in is just a little bit of purchaser information. So again, this will be, um, I suppose, the main contact that you're putting in here. So. Um, uh, phone number, address, and again, this can be shorter or longer um, as the province sees fit, whatever information that they need to capture from you. Click save, and then this just brings you straight through to the payment page. So you don't need to do anything else on that. Let's get my card again. Click continue. Again, it's added on the fees for you. Click make payment. And again, this time it looks like it's just gonna go straight through for me and it'll bring you through to this payment summary page. Now you can come back in and you can click into your team sheet panels again. And this time, again, you'll see on the summary here, players, officials, events. Click to edit the panel and you'll see one of the events that you've registered into. And again, as you enter this panel or roster into more events as you go on, you'll see that list populate. Um, you can, again, as long as the roster locks uh, or roster lock dates are, are open, you can come in at any time. You can add players onto this. And as I said, your officials can do that uh, from their own account as well. So I'm actually just gonna add, um, And remove that actually i think we had a limit put in so click add i'm just going to add that test player that we had registered as the official just to show you that this member is able to uh, control this from their user login as well so what they'll see now when they're logged in over on the left hand side you see this team sheets panels link it gives you access to this same 
roster that we've already created gives you the same links, the same available links to manage the team or manage the, the roster. Again, players, exactly the same functionality in there. Enter into event, again, exactly the same thing that you can do there. Add it to the cart, add it to the cart and enter the um, enter that roster into, into any events that are open to your um, to, to your age grade. Sorry, now I just exited out of that by accident, but um, that covers, I think, everything that you'll need um, from your club portal. Um, most important thing, or one of just, as I said earlier, just one of the most important things to be aware of or not be put off by is after you go through the group registration, don't be alarmed if you click into view members for the first time and you see no members in there. So open up your search and filter options here, change your membership status, change it to need more info, and you'll see the ones that you've already registered in um, into the system. And the key for getting those players active is just that they, they need to log into their own accounts, um, update their info, sign their waivers. If any members have any issues with any of this or, or you have any issues with any registration or anything like that, feel free to contact us at, um, by email myself um, if you want, if you have my own direct email there from the, the call invite or our support desk and um, we'll, we'll help you out as best as we can. Um, I know a few questions came in there on the chat, but does anybody have any other questions um, either by chat or if you want to uh, unmute yourself and ask a question? Uh, Owen, oh, with the uh, with the section where they have to create uh, an email template to go out, yeah. uh, do we do we have the ability to just have a something in there that can just be a generic one? I, I thought um, we talked about that uh, already. But. We can, yeah. We we've, we've done it. We've done it. If you want to even about what you want to say, if you want to send that on to me, I, I can get it put into all the clubs for you if you like. Yeah, I think that would be the easiest thing to do yeah. just so they don't have to worry about creating something. Yeah, we'll have then, that set up for you guys. Perfect, perfect. Did anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I know it probably all seems a little bit uh, overwhelming for everybody, but uh, but really once uh, once it gets down to it, there's really not a whole lot that uh, that you'll have to do. It uh, it seems very technical looking at all the links and everything else, but uh, there there are also a lot of videos that uh, that we have available that will be able to, to help you guys out in addition to having this one uh, recorded and available to check out. Um, we can, uh, I'll have those links available for you guys uh, just on our website in our general, just kind of registration, I'll have some info there for everybody. Yeah, is that, this, uh, this is the type of thing that you'll see. So for example, if you come in here and you need help on the group registration, you can just click into it there and different links that are needed um, will be available there for you. So there's a, a couple of just short videos, two and three minutes. Um, this one will show you how to go through the registration process. This one is the, the member side on the needs more info and everything like that. So there is, there is, um, or there are help guides here available for you if you need them. Uh, Stephen, <laughs> over 50 is young by comparison to some, some callers that we have into the help desk. So <laughs> don't, don't be putting years on yourself. Um, any other questions from anyone? Sounds like we're good. Brilliant. Um, thanks everybody for your time. Um, this this is recorded, so um, I will share the link um, with Anthony and and he can share it with the rest of you. Um, and like I said, I, I I'll send on the different links for um, our support channels and everything like that. So if any questions ever pop up or if you're having any issues while you're using this up on the live environment at any time, just please feel free to, to drop us an email.
So thanks everyone again and take care. Have a good night, guys.